Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, I've got another very requested topic for you. We'll be talking about kplexes. Recall that a click of a graph is a set of vertices or a subgraph such that every pair of vertices is joined by an edge. Here's an example of a click here, a complete subgraph, in this case on three vertices. The problem with clicks is that it's a very strict definition. Every pair of vertices has to be adjacent in a click. So we've talked about a few definitions of structures that aren't quite as strict as clicks. We've talked about k-clicks, k-clans, and k-clubs and k-cores. I'll leave links in the description to lessons on all of those topics. They're not necessary to understand this lesson about k-plexes, but they are some similar concepts. One way we can think about a click or a complete graph is that in a click on n vertices, every vertex needs to be adjacent to n minus 1 vertices. So if a click has n vertices, then each vertex of the click is adjacent to every vertex except for itself, which is the minus 1. For k-plexes, we relax the definition of a click by increasing the possible value for this number 1. So if G is a graph with vertex set V, then a subset S of the vertex set V is a k-plex in G if the degree of V in the subgraph of G induced by S is at least the cardinality of S minus K for every vertex V in S. I know that's a mouthful, so what this is saying is that if we take a subset of the vertex set of a graph, then consider the subgraph induced by that vertex set, that's this notation, the subgraph of G induced by the vertex set S. And remember that just consists of all vertices in S and all edges that joined them in the graph G. So if in that subgraph of G induced by S, every vertex has a degree of at least cardinality of S minus K, then S is a k-plex. And similarly, as with clicks, we may call a subset of vertices a k-plex, but we can also call a graph a k-plex. So we may say that a graph G is a k-plex if the minimum degree of G is at least the cardinality of the vertex set of G minus k. And note that the phrase at least is just another way of saying greater than or equal to. Here's what I think is a straightforward way to wrap your head around this definition. In a k-plex, every vertex is allowed to not be adjacent to at most k vertices. Typically, we're considering k values that are positive integers. So, for an example, for what value of k is this graph here a k-plex? Perhaps we begin with k equals 1, so is this graph a 1-plex? Well, the graph has a total of 5 vertices, so by definition, in order for this graph to be a 1-plex, the degree of every vertex in the graph must be at least its order, 5, minus that value 1, and that of course is equal to 4. So the degree of every vertex in this graph must be at least 4 in order for it to be a 1-plex. Thus, it's certainly not a 1-plex. No vertex in this graph has a degree of at least 4. And notice that a 1-plex is actually the same as a click. So that's how we know this is a generalization of the click concept. For k equals 1, a 1-plex, that's a click. Because in a 1-plex, every vertex is allowed only to not be adjacent to one vertex. That one vertex is going to have to be itself. Thus, in a 1-plex, each vertex is adjacent to all of the other vertices. So if we quickly just sketch an example here of a complete graph on four vertices, this is a 1-plex. The order of this graph, which we often just represent by n, is equal to 4. So in order to be a 1-plex, every vertex in this graph must have a degree of at least 4 minus 1, which is 3. And indeed, the complete graph on four vertices satisfies that condition. Each vertex is adjacent to all three of the other vertices. So this complete graph, or click, on four vertices is a one-plex. So just remember that for k equals one, a one-plex, those are clicks, or complete graphs. So this graph is not a one-plex. How about k equals two? Is it a two-plex? 
Well, again, the order of this graph is 5, so in order to be a tuplex, all of its vertices would need to have a degree of at least 5 minus 2, which is 3. This graph also fails that restriction because all of these vertices, these three here, they all have a degree of 2, which is less than 3, so it's not a tuplex either. In fact, for a graph, we can easily determine for what values of k it is a k-plex just based upon its minimum degree. The minimum degree of this graph is 2, so we might write that here, lowercase delta of g is equal to 2. Note that this notation for the minimum degree of a graph is not quite universal, and in fact, the paper that introduced k-plexes did not use lowercase delta to mean minimum degree. I'll leave a link to that paper in the description where lowercase delta of g is actually used to indicate the diameter of g. But for our purposes, this is minimum degree, so the minimum degree of g is equal to 2. Remember that the order of this graph, its number of vertices, is 5, so by definition of k-plex, the graph will be a k-plex whenever its minimum degree, which is equal to 2, is at least 5 minus k. Thus, solving for k, we have that our graph will be a k-plex for every positive integer k that's greater than or equal to 5 minus 2, which is, of course, 3. So this graph, which you might notice is a complete bipartite graph, is certainly a 3-plex. Its number of vertices is 5. If we subtract 3, that's equal to 2, and the degree of every vertex in this graph is indeed at least 2, because 2 is the minimum degree of the graph. Thus, the graph is certainly also a 4-plex, a 5-plex, and so on for greater values of k. The greater the value of k, the weaker the restriction. Remember that in a 3-plex, each vertex is allowed to not be adjacent to, at most, three vertices. If we look at the vertex v3, for an example, it is not adjacent to v3, it's not adjacent to v4, and it's not adjacent to v5, and so that's allowable. It's not adjacent to three vertices, and that's true for every vertex in this graph, it is a 3-plex. It's helpful to think of k in the term k-plex as the number of vertices that each vertex is allowed to not be adjacent to, because the number of vertices that a vertex must be adjacent to in a k-plex depends on the order of the k-plex. So each vertex in any 3-plex is not adjacent to at most 3 vertices in the 3-plex. So, since this graph has five vertices, each vertex must be adjacent to at least two vertices. If the graph had seven vertices, however, then for it to be a three-plex, each vertex would need to be adjacent to at least four vertices. So that's why it's really useful and simplifies things to think of k as an allowance for non-neighbors. In a k-plex, each vertex is allowed to have at most k vertices that are not neighbors. Now, we've talked about this graph as a k-plex for different values of k. Let's check out this graph over here and start talking a bit about k-plexes as subsets of the vertex set. Quickly, we might note that the minimum degree of this graph is equal to 3. Thus, by definition of k-plex, our graph as a whole will be a k-plex for any positive integer k such that the minimum degree of the graph, 3, is at least 6 minus k. That's at least the cardinality of the vertex set minus k. Thus, just as with the previous graph, this graph will be a k-plex for any positive integer k that is at least 3. Now let's consider a subset of the vertex set. Consider the vertices v1, v3, v4, and v6. Those are these four highlighted vertices. Then, if we call this vertex subset S, by definition of k-plex, in order to determine if S is a k-plex for different values of k, we need to consider the degrees of the vertices in the subgraph that is induced by S. So if we call this whole graph G, we can find the subgraph of G induced by our vertex set S by just taking all the vertices from S and their adjoining edges in G. This can also be found by just deleting the vertices not in S as well as their incident edges. So we could just delete V2 and delete V5 and we are left with the subgraph of G induced by S. 
Now that we're considering the vertex-induced subgraph, we can find for what values of k, s is a k-plex the same way we were doing before. We can identify that the minimum degree of the subgraph of g induced by the vertex set s is equal to 2. And take note of the fact that since we're considering the subgraph of g induced by s, we'll never be considering neighbors of vertices that are outside of our k-plex. This is a problem you might remember that k-clicks do have. Again, I'll leave a link to that lesson about k-clicks in the description, but k-plexes don't have this problem. Since the minimum degree of the subgraph induced by s is equal to 2, by definition of k-plex, s is a k-plex for any positive integer k such that the minimum degree of s, 2, is at least the order of s, 4, minus k. Then, solving for k, we see that s will be a k-plex for all positive integers k that are at least 2. So, this graph is a 2-plex, and remember, that means that each vertex in the graph is allowed to not be adjacent to at most two other vertices in the 2-plex. If we look at the vertex v3, for example, it's not adjacent to v1, and it's not adjacent to v3. So, it's not adjacent to no more than two vertices. And again, the graph will also be a k-plex for increasingly large values of k. The higher the value of k, the weaker the restriction. But remember, the number of neighbors a vertex is required to have depends on the cardinality of the k-plex. If s had 10 vertices, for example, then in order to be a 2-plex, each vertex of s would have to be adjacent to at least 10 minus 2, or 8 vertices, in this induced subgraph. One question we're often concerned with is maximality. Is this a maximal k-plex? Well, for k equals 3, we know the entire graph is a 3-plex, so s is definitely not a maximal 3-plex because it is a proper subset of the entire vertex set, which is also a 3-plex. However, maybe it's a maximal 2-plex, and again, that means that it's not a proper subset of any other 2-plex. If it is not a maximal 2-plex, then we should be able to extend it to a bigger 2-plex by including some other vertex. Now we're again looking at our original graph, and I have highlighted the subgraph induced by our 2-plex S. Could we extend the tuplex by including v5 or v2? Well, if we try to extend our vertex subset S to get a bigger tuplex, by definition of tuplex, the minimum degree of the graph induced by our vertex set S will have to be greater than or equal to the order of S, which will now be 5 if we include another vertex, minus 2, since we're considering tuplexes. This is, of course, equal to 3, so the minimum degree would have to be at least 3. In our original vertex-induced subgraph, v3 and v1 both had a degree of 2. So, if we include another vertex, that vertex needs to be adjacent to both v1 and v3 so that they get that required degree of 3 in the new induced subgraph. This immediately rules out v2. We cannot extend the tuplex by including v2. If we were to include v2 in S and highlight the new subgraph induced by that vertex set, we see that our vertex v1 still has a degree of just 2 in that induced subgraph, the two neighbors v4 and v3, and thus it can't be a 2-plex because not every vertex has a degree of at least 5 minus 2 or 3. Certainly, another condition that any vertex we might include must meet in order to get a bigger tuplex is that the vertex is adjacent to at least three vertices already in our set. Otherwise, when we include that additional vertex, its degree in the induced subgraph would not be at least three. V2 would also have that problem. It's only adjacent to V6 and V3 in our vertex set S. So, if we included V2, then in the induced subgraph, the degree of V2 is only 2. On the other hand, the vertex V5 satisfies both conditions. It's adjacent to V1 and V3, thus their degrees in the induced subgraph will be raised to 3 as we need it to be. 
Additionally, V5 is adjacent to four vertices in the set S. In other words, it's adjacent to all of them. So if we include V5 in the set, its minimum degree in the induced subgraph is definitely at least three. And so this set S is a maximal tuplex. It's a subset of the vertex set of G containing five vertices such that in the subgraph of G induced by the vertex set, every vertex has a degree of at least five minus two, which is three. So it is a tuplex and it is a maximal tuplex because we can't extend it by including any other vertex in the graph. Note that if we tried to include V2 to get a bigger tuplex, then our vertex set would have six vertices. So to be a tuplex, every vertex would need a degree of at least six minus two, which is four. And that's certainly not true because for example, V2 is only adjacent to three vertices. And again, I wanna emphasize this understanding of kplex. In a tuplex, for example, every vertex is allowed to not be adjacent to at most two vertices in the tuplex. Our vertex V3, for example, in this tuplex is not adjacent to V3 and it's not adjacent to V1, but it is adjacent to every other vertex in the tuplex. One more important thing I wanna mention before we go. Let the star of a vertex V, denoted SV, be defined as the set containing the vertex V, as well as all of the neighbors of V. So we define that here, the star of a vertex V is the set containing V, unioned with the neighbors of V. Then, if a graph is a kplex, we can take the union of the stars of any k vertices in the graph, and we will get the original vertex set. So remember, we said this graph is a threeplex. Thus, if we take the unions of the stars of any three vertices in this graph, that union will have all vertices of the graph. Suppose we pick the vertices V1, V5, and V3. Just for an example, by definition, the star of V1 contains V1 and the neighbors of V1, which are V4, V6, and V5. The union of the stars of the three circled vertices vertices, you could easily verify, contains all vertices of the graph. Conversely, if in a graph, the union of the stars of any k vertices equals the vertex set, then that graph is a kplex. So this is an alternative characterization of kplexes. Don't worry too much if you're a little confused about that. There are links in the description to papers which discuss that characterization, and we'll also go over it in detail in a future lesson. So one more time, a kplex can be a certain subset of vertices of a graph, or a kplex can be a graph itself. A subset of vertices is a kplex if, in the graph induced by that subset, every vertex is not adjacent to at most k vertices in the subset, which means the degree of every vertex in the induced subgraph is at least cardinality of s minus k. If a graph is a kplex, that means the minimum degree of the graph is at least the order of the graph minus k. Again, that means that every vertex is not adjacent to at most k vertices. So I hope this video helped you understand what a kplex Kplex is, as well as some examples of kplexes and maximal kplexes and all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And rip it, I did with a knife in my hand. I'm crushing the glass until it turns to